it's a strange saga, but it has very deep archetypal elements that ev- that everyone will be able to tap into. It has love, violence, betrayal, romance. You know, two very attractive young people that are have feelings for each other. It has a lot of very comfortingly conventional elements that drive the story. In that sense, it's very innovative. Ninety-nine percent of the people that say they like theater and enjoy going to the theater, they have no idea what has to go into this. Window's gonna be here. Okay. Uh, he's, he's drawn up here under the palace window. You want me to come up? And... No, no, you don't need to come up. But you can, you can know he's out right outside the window. <laughs> I picked the Prince of Hamburg because it's a play that I admire very much. It's one of the great plays of all time. However, what the play deals with is something that I've always been interested in as an actor and as a director and as a writer and as a theater person, which is basically the contract between the individual and society. You know, you, you might be the youngest guy, Still. but you're the person who's entrusted. Okay. The play's an intellectual play. It's very German in that way. There's an argument being made in the play, and really the argument is the primary thing that's being made, that's being discussed. So it's not bells and whistles and it's it's not the greatest love story ever told. It's not the greatest war ever staged. It's not uh, the greatest this and that, whatever. It is really sort of an argument that, at a university level, is that it encourages discourse afterwards about what is the argument, what do you feel, what was the journey of the prince, what happened to the prince, why was it for the greater good? Was it not for the greater good? And like all plays, it leaves an ambiguity about the the event, the prime that primary last event. It's also couched in a dreamlike nature. So it's sort of like it has a double kind of lenses for you to look at the work and then to talk about it. 